In today's video, I want to talk with you a little bit about long exposure on mirrorless cameras. This video is sponsored by Vero. Recently, I got rid of my old Canon SL2 camera. Uh, it's um, a APS-C DSLR camera. And I sold it and I bought a new camera. It's a Canon R7. It's an APS-C mirrorless camera. And I bought it mainly to do some video work and also to serve as a backup camera to my 5D Mark IV. This video is being recorded with the uh, R7 and I have already tested it at home, um, outdoors, in events, uh, doing landscape photography, architectural photography. And as you know, I love to shoot long exposure. If you haven't seen yet my video about uh, long exposure comparison between the 5D Mark IV and the um, SL2 camera. Uh, you can check on this link here. So this time I tested in um, two conditions, two different conditions. I do this test uh, mainly to uh, check about uh, hot pixels because when you do a long exposure, uh, when you do a, a very long exposure, I mean, uh, more than two or four minutes long, uh, it starts to kick in some uh, hot pixels. So this is caused by uh, the sensor, uh, the heating heat on the sensor. So it causes erratic measures uh, on the color of the light. And it happens even at the lowest ISO possible because it's a different noise than the uh, high ISO noise. So I want to share with you now some of the results I've got comparing both cameras, the 5D Mark IV full frame and the mirrorless R7 APS-C camera. Let's get into it. Okay, so what I did here was to uh, do some shots uh, from my, my office. So uh, everything you see uh, with CR3 is the uh, mirrorless camera. CR2 is the uh, full frame camera. So I did uh, first with uh, uh, 15 seconds, then uh, also with uh, one camera and the other camera, okay, 15 seconds both. Then I moved to 120 seconds, which is two minutes, also both cameras. Then uh, 960, which is equivalent to about 16 minutes. Uh, with the mirrorless and also with the full frame camera. So let's do a comparison here. Just don't don't mind the, the table mess. Uh, so I have here, let's take an area of shadows. And I will uh, lift a little bit uh, the shadows here. So maybe two points. As we can see, 15 seconds, it's okay for uh, this is the mirrorless and for the uh, 5D Mark IV, the full frame DSLR camera, also two seconds. So we can see there's almost no noise at all. Okay, so this is in both cameras. One thing that I noticed was uh, the R7, it has a little noise, even at ISO 100, in, in some uh, brighter areas, which I, honestly, I didn't like this. Uh, the SL2, which was an older camera, had better results. So moving on with uh, this two, uh, 120 seconds. So let's put here a comparison between two. So on the left side, we see the, um, this is two minute exposure, okay? Uh, on the left side, we see the R7 camera and on the right side, the full frame camera. As we can see, uh, this noise starts to appear uh, very much on the R7, which is even worse than the, the SL2. If I increase here a little bit the exposure, by two points, you see that the noise even gets worse. 
even on some areas like you can see it's completely bad this is not very good really not very good um, so if I did so I do that this on the uh, DSLR camera full frame camera I can increase here also two points and there's almost no noise at all okay even in two minute exposure as you can see it deals pretty well with the noise it's acceptable and then lastly we did a 16 minute exposure let's take a look this is really bad okay it's a 16 minute exposure what do you expect but uh, if we take a look at the uh, full frame uh, it's not really too bad but the r7 is completely unacceptable uh, one thing that I would like to notice is that I made all of these shots with long exposure reduction, uh, noise reduction turned off. So if I increase here the exposure to plus two, take a look at how terrible this noise is. If I do the same on the uh, full frame, you see it's okay, it's bad, but uh, I can I can manage with this with the uh, uh, long exposure noise reduction for example I can go to uh, the detail tab and click on even the denoise or the manual noise reduction it would solve this problem so I took these shots from my window here at home and this is um, 15 uh, 1 to 320 of a second with the full frame camera DSLR so this four here so I would compare this one with this one so let's take a look at the R7 with 1 to 20 50 of a second it's not even a long exposure but this is ISO 100 okay it's pretty good even at shadows it's okay I would expect that of course and if I go to my full frame camera also there's there's a little bit of variance uh, in the exposure because while I was doing the exposure the, the sky the clouds changed a little bit but it's not big deal uh, let's do a comparison now with the 15 seconds okay 15 seconds with the DSLR full frame camera no noise at all so everything's good the brighter areas darker areas and let's take a look at the Canon R7 so it's okay no noise again the sky it's pretty much okay now let's go to 120 seconds this is the DSLR full frame camera 5D Mark IV again so no noticeable noise sometimes there's a this is a dead, dead pixel also a little dead pixel here but it's okay overall it's okay now let's check uh, with the uh, mirrorless okay let's take a look at the sky it's fine very good let's take a look at the shadows area mm, it's pretty much good it's good it's good okay so brighter areas brighter areas is fine now let's take a look again uh, with a 16 minute exposure let's take a look at this sky you can see that it's starting to appear some hot pixels here another one here another one but overall the image is fine another one here so this area here it's really starting to appear some noise but it's acceptable Dep depending on what are you going to do if you're going to print for example or uh, it might be an issue but if you're going to post on uh, Vero or any other social media you won't uh, it, this won't be a problem okay uh, and let's take a look now at the R7 with 16 minute exposure so take a look at that okay let's take a look at the sky so even the sky on a brighter area you can see that this noise start appearing 
So uh, comparing this with the uh, with the previous video, you can see the previous video, right? Uh, on the, this link here, uh, with the SL2, when I compare the 5D Mark IV with the SL2, you see that the SL2 has uh, better results than the mirrorless camera. I just posted these photos on Vero. Please go to my Vero profile and take a close look between both photographs and let me know here let me know there in the comments section which one do you believe it was taken with a DSLR and which one with the mirrorless camera? Well, if you don't know what Vero is, Vero is a social media ad-free, no algorithms, you can see posts from your friends in chronological order and you will never miss a thing. Besides that, it's hands down the best photo sharing experience you have. You can post links, photos, videos, and share what uh, books or movies you're listening to. And you can even choose what your audience will see. Uh, only friends, for example, acquaintances or public. If you're only interested in seeing photos, no problem. You can go to the photos section and see all photos that were shared recently from people you follow. As a bonus tip for today, if you want to read a caption in any language you don't understand, you can go to the translation tool. You simply click on it and it will translate to your country's language. Nice, huh? Please give it a try. Don't forget to comment on my photo. Try to figure out which one was taken with which camera. And please follow me on Vero. I'll leave a link on the description of this video. My conclusion is that the R7, uh, it has the same sensor size, uh, it's an APS-C camera, same as the old uh, Canon SL2, so they have both um, the same sensor size, but in the R7 we have 32 megapixels, so you, you have more uh, megapixels for the same area. In the SL2 you have 24 megapixels, so uh, this likely would increase the noise. This is one of the hypotheses. I'm not a scientist, okay? <laughs> so I did not, uh, I'm not making a very detailed experiments here. It's more of a feeling um, of shooting long exposure for many years with different cameras, okay? The other hypothesis I have is that the mirrorless camera, it overheats a little more <laughs> than the DSLR cameras. These are my main two hypotheses. Um, and I would like to know from you, please leave here in the comments section, what do you think um, could be this difference? I'm not saying you to not to buy a mirrorless camera, because if you have a DSLR, uh, at some point you, you have to migrate to a mirrorless camera, right? But if you, uh, if you do a lot of long exposures like I do, um, I would suggest you to stick with your uh, old DSLR or buy an old DSLR or even a film camera. So film camera, you don't have a problem with, uh, you don't have the noise problem that we have in the sensors, right, in digital. Oh, okay, you might be saying, okay, but you compared a full frame camera with uh, an APS-C mirrorless camera. How about, for example, a Canon R6 or a Canon uh, R5? Um, well, uh, I've got also bad news because uh, when possibly I, I have this uh, Canon 5D Mark IV for about five years now and at some point I will have to upgrade this equipment. If I would have to upgrade now, my obvious choice would be to upgrade to a mirrorless R5 camera. But I saw some results uh, from another long exposure photographer, Michael Breitung, you can check on the description, uh, a link to his video. I, I think I'll leave you a card here also, where he compares his Canon R5 with the Nikon and the Sony. Uh, you can see on this link here. The Canon R5 is terrible regarding long exposure noise. It's even worse than the Canon RP. So this leads me to think that the issue is to have 
many more megapixels on the same sensor size. So at some point when I need to upgrade my equipment, I will have to look to other alternatives because I love to shoot long exposures and sometimes very, very long exposures. So that will affect my work. So I either stick longer with my DSLR or maybe, I don't know, go back to film? No, it's impractical. Or even go to, for example, a mirrorless medium format camera. It appears that long exposure, uh, the advancement of the cameras um, are not made for long exposure. Long exposure is like old school now. Um, the older the cameras, the better results you get with long exposures, unfortunately. Because for me, in order to do long exposure photography, as you can see in all my videos from this channel, uh, I like to uh, take my time uh, to slow down, contemplate the landscape, the details. Um, so it's a slow kind of photography. And the manufacturers want to each time want to put more speed, uh, more clicks per second, uh, more out of focus points. And for me, since most of my work is long exposure, I, I'm not really interested in all these features. I just need a camera with low long exposure noise. Okay, enough of mumbling about this. It was just a heads up of what's going on with my equipment, the tests I have been doing. So I hope you like this video. And don't forget, go out and shoot something, no matter what equipment you have. And I will see you on the next video.